everybody. Hi, and welcome to work to our Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area Summer Earn and Learn Information Session. We are so excited to have you guys here today to learn about how you can be a part of this amazing program and opportunity for summer 2021. I want to advise you that this uh, webinar will be recorded. So the webinar is recorded and uh, we will be um, making it available to um, everybody as soon as we get it edited. So welcome, welcome again and we're glad you are here. My name is Jessica Olmos. I am the uh, special, project, special Projects Manager here at Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area. And today we want to talk to you about the Summer Earn and Learn program. The SEAL program provides students with disabilities, work workplace readiness training, work experience, and transferable skills, uh, transferable skill learning opportunities while they earn compensation for time worked on the job site. Our goal today is to provide you with information and answer questions regarding the application process. We look forward to making our Summer Earn and Learn 21 uh, the best experience yet. At this time, I want to introduce to you guys Ryan Tatum. Ryan Tatum is the Performance Analyst, SEAL Specialist for Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area. Ryan has been working with the SEAL program since 2018, starting as a temporary SEAL coordinator, but quickly took over the operations of the program in the middle of the same year. Ever since, SEAL has been his primary focus. Working with disabled youth has been a major part of Ryan's adolescent and adult life, so naturally SEAL has become a great passion for him. At this time, I'm going to hand it over to Ryan. If you guys have any questions uh, throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A box and we will get to those towards the end of the presentation. And I'm handing it over to Ryan. Thanks, Jessica. <clears throat> all right, guys. How's everybody doing? It's it's. I'm glad that you're all here. Uh, it's good to not necessarily see you because I can't see you all right now, but I'm glad you're here uh, to learn a little bit more about the SEAL program. Um, so some of the things that I want to cover for the SEAL program, um, I think, Jessica, if you'll move to the next slide, and there's, there's a few very important points that we want to cover. Um, and these six specifically, um, from my end, I would like to cover with you guys. So the first one being safety. I know that right now and for the past year, um, you know, COVID-19 has been, you know, at the forefront of everybody's minds and it looks like it will continue to be that way for a, a little while longer. Um, so we want everybody to feel comfortable knowing that we are taking some precautions when it comes to monitoring the safety of not only the participants, but the employers too. So as a part of our vetting process, we're having the employers complete a questionnaire about their safety measures uh, of what they already have in place and what safety precautions that they would like any of their participants to understand and follow while they're at that work site whenever we've placed them and the program actually begins. So for the participants, during our mandatory work readiness training, we will also cover some appropriate workplace safety measures and recommendations from both OSHA and uh, the CDC, specifically regarding COVID-19, uh, but also just general workplace safety and other things like that too. Um, so the SEAL work sessions, uh, those we have two different sessions. Um, there's the first session, which is six weeks, and it's the first half of the summer. And then the second session is also six weeks to take up the, the last half of the summer. So the first session actually starts June 5th and runs through July 16th. Um, the deadline for those applications, if you want to participate in that first session, is April 23rd. So then the second um, summer session starts July 3rd and runs through August 13th. And the deadline for those applications is May 21st. So you can obviously send in your applications much sooner than that. As soon as you get one, actually the better because we'll start tracking those. Uh, but those would be the deadlines. So again, session one is April 23rd and session two is May 21st. Um, so 
the reason why we kind of split up the summer into these two sessions is for us to better monitor when the, particip the participants are actually going to be working. So it is a five week work experience. So we made each one of those summer sessions six weeks so that if you have to miss a week uh, for a camp or if your family's going on vacation or something like that, you still have an additional week to be able to complete the five weeks. Um, we also wanted it to be split into those two sessions so that if a specific employer wants to have several participants, uh, then the participants get that opportunity to work together at the same times uh, to kind of develop that camaraderie and also that shared experience of, you know, working in that place new to it together. Um, and then finally, also one of the things that it does is that it allows the participants and the employers to tell us about any portion of the summer that they might not be available to participate. If you have, again, the like camps or any other summer programs or anything that are going to take up too much of that time, uh, then you would just choose the session that is least affected by that if both are going to be affected. And we can always kind of make some exceptions, uh, kind of split it up between the two sessions if necessary. Um, we do want to kind of avoid that, but you know, it, as long as we know in advance, we, we should be able to work with you. And it also kind of comes to the availability of the employer also. Um, so the next one is job placements. So we use the information from participant applications and also the information that is provided by the employers to choose the most appropriate participant worksite match. Um, so basically the more information that participants put on their applications, the better, and the more information we get from employers, the better. Um, this worksite placement, uh, we start doing that about a month in advance of you know, the participants' respective start dates. So that gives us time to notify participants, parents, vocational rehabilitation, and uh, the employers too. Um, so while we're making these placements, we will be in contact with the participants and their parents to make sure that it's a good fit, right? We don't want to, to place anybody you know, somewhere and then find out after their first day that it's just not going to work out. So we are going to contact you guys to make sure that you feel like that's going to be a good fit for you. Um, and, you know, um, it's very important for everybody to understand that specific worksite placements may not be able to be guaranteed. Uh, the reason why I say that is that we can't always guarantee that we're going to have an employer that that has participated before that you may have heard about, or we can't guarantee that um, we can place a participant with a specific employer if the employer has requested one. It just we just can't guarantee that it doesn't always work out that way. We will try everything that we can to accommodate both employers and the participants and their interests, but we just want to make sure that everybody knows that it's not necessarily a guarantee. All right, so the next thing is the work readiness training. So this is really important. It is mandatory. It is an orientation for all of the participants to attend. Uh, it has to be done prior to their first day of the summer work experience. So we have that set up to be the week leading up to their start date. Um, this is where we're gonna cover important information like workplace etiquette, uh, general safety, um, time and attendance recording, and, and just general workplace readiness uh, information. You know, basically how, how to act appropriately, what things you should do, uh, you know, while you're at work, because it will be different than school and uh, anywhere else. So, uh, like I said, these orientations are going to be held the week leading up to the start dates for each of the sessions. There will be an orientation in all three of our main offices, the Round Rock Workforce Solutions Office, the Fast Drop Office, and the San Marcos Office. Um, when we make these worksite placement notifications and we, we're sending this information out to everybody, we're also going to send you guys the 
uh, the flyers with the respective dates and times for the orientation that is uh, in your area and for your session. So that'll be a, a good reminder for you guys. It has the, it'll have the exact date and time and it'll have the reminders of what things that you're gonna need to bring because you will need to bring a couple of things. Um, because this next bullet here, the new hire paperwork process and payroll submission. So the reason why this, this uh, work readiness training is, well, it's very important anyways, but another reason why it's very important is this new hire paperwork is essentially how we're gonna get every participant paid. This is where we're gonna set up the payroll. So um, it has to be completed during orientation. It's really the only time that we're gonna be able to get it done. Um, so it's very important that every participant brings two valid forms of ID, such as uh, your physical social security card, not a copy, um, a current school or state ID, a driver's license, a passport, things like that. Um, and so we need that to fill out specific documents to get your payroll set up. Uh, one of the things that we're, we're going to need from you guys also is we're going to set up your either direct deposit or payroll debit card election form. So you can have your pay deposited directly into a bank account or onto a reloadable visa card. It's a payroll debit card. And uh, so if you want it direct deposited into your bank account, we're going to need you guys to also bring your bank account information or like your, your bank's direct deposit form because they'll have them also. Um, so that's super important. So we got two forms of ID and your bank account information if you want it direct deposited. Um, and another thing that uh, is important is uh, your paychecks, right? That's super important. So your paychecks are gonna come bi-weekly, which means every two weeks. And um, those will be paid directly to you guys from our third party payroll contractor, which is called Unique HR. We handle the timesheets uh, in regards to picking up the timesheets and, and submitting that payroll. But while you're at your work site, your supervisor will have your timesheet. And so you will be responsible for checking to make sure the times on there are right uh, so that we get you guys paid the appropriate amount for the amount that you worked. Uh, so that's super important, and we will definitely cover that over orientation because it's so important. All right, and then lastly here is uh, contacting your SEAL staff. Obviously, Ms. Olmos and I are SEAL staff, um, and we are the main SEAL staff, but we may not necessarily be your point of contact for SEAL. So communicating with your SEAL staff members is super important, and we want to make sure that we're all you know, available as readily as possible whenever you have questions. Um, so also when we send out those worksite placement notifications to you guys with those flyers for orientations and all the other stuff, uh, we'll also be assigning you a specific point of contact. And so that person will be responsible for, for communications with you regarding any SEAL questions or concerns. Um, and before you get assigned a point of contact, you can certainly reach out to us at this email here that's at the bottom of the screen, seal at ruralcapital.net. Um, and then after you assigned a point of contact, if you can't get a hold of them for some reason, you can also send that, uh, that email a message and, and one of us will be checking that regularly. Uh, and so we will, we will find out uh, you know, what's taking so long for your point of contact to get back to you. So, um, so just remember that and, and that will be on pretty much all of our documents too. seal at ruralcapital.net. Uh, that is the go-to, but once we assign you a point of contact, that'll be your, your direct line of contact for, for any questions. All right. And that is it for my six points there. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan, for sharing that information with everyone. Uh, it's a great opportunity for participants not only to get work readiness training and gain soft skills, uh, but it gives them the opportunity to gain work experience training and actual work experience to put to add to their resume and get paid for it. So it is just a, a wonderful program. And um, we appreciate you sharing all of that information with us, Ryan. 
Thank no you. All right, everyone. So at this time, I do want to introduce Ella Edwards. Ella Edwards is a VR transitional counselor with exceptional people and communication skills with proven experience in supportive services for elderly, people with disabilities, and staff training developing and motivating tools. For nearly 30 years, she has developed teams and offered recommendations for changes that will improve employees' morale, increase productivity. Currently, she hosts a cop shop podcast that addresses the needs of many different communities. She has a strong record of achievement outside of the Texas Workforce Rehabilitation Service with skills in diverse areas of organizational development, leadership, and volunteering. Um, Ella, at uh, this time, you are free to take it away. Thank you for being here. Hey, I want to say, first of all, that I am really, really excited that you came today. You came for whatever reasons, but I hope you came because you want to spend your summers in a job arena where you can learn employable skills because those skills that you learn are going to transition into a lot of different things as you age and grow into your career. We're gonna talk a little bit about eligibility. What does that mean exactly? So the Texas Workforce Rehabilitation Services in partner with the rural capital came together and I guess they decided with the WOA that they were gonna service children or young adults between the ages of 14 to 22. Well, in this instance, you have to be old enough to work and I'm grateful for that. So all you have to do is show up, have a disability and be between those age groups that we're able to service. We're gonna talk a little bit about the application deadline. And as Ryan said before, there's two sessions. There is one that starts, or oh, you have to have your application in to start by April 23rd. That's the first session. The second, you have to have that application in by May 21st. I'm going to go over some things in the application because there's some things that sometimes students and parents miss that are imperative that we have so we can get you connected with Ryan and Jessica, and so that they can find the right fit for you. Can I see the application? Yes, ma'am. There we go. Okay, so make sure that you've got your name, your address, email address, parents information, the organizational part right here where it says participant work history. If you have any work history, put it there. Work history can also be volunteer work. Have you volunteered to work and do anything at the church? Have you babysit the neighbor's dog or cat? All of that matters when it comes to building employable skills. Transportation, who's gonna get you there? My mom's gonna get me there, is an Uber gonna get me there, is my aunt gonna get me there, or am I gonna go with the neighbor next door and are we gonna carpool? That would need to be in there, okay? and. A little part right here at the very bottom right there, it says signatures, okay? Signatures are very important. Check off all the boxes that apply to you. Put your dates and your signatures, make sure you have contacts, make sure you have your parents' contacts information. That just makes the process easier when you have all of your signatures. If you don't have all your signatures and date on there, that kind of like slows it down a little bit because when they send it to the right channel, they're gonna send it back to your VR counselor and we'll talk about that in a second. And she's gonna to have to hunt you down, get signatures and date to complete this form. Next form, please. This is a media release form. Now, years ago, I thought to myself, well, why would we need a media release form? Well, it's the state of Texas. You need a media release form in case Jessica or Ryan comes to your establishment, establishment of work and say, hey, can we take some video pictures of you while you're doing your work so we can inspire other people to do this? And you're going to say, absolutely. And then they're going to check and see if you had a media release. If you did not have that media release, then they can't do it. And you all want to be on camera because you just never know. You could end up working in that field, OK? Those things after they get signed and signatures, it's gonna to go to the VR counselors and she's gonna send that 
to Miss Charmaine Johnson. Okay? And if you have any questions, you can put that in your chat. Now, VR counselors, you can go to your local Texas Workforce Solution Center and find one there if you do not have one already. You may call your school to see if they have one assigned to them because you can get that information from them as well. When you get in contact with that counselor, whether it's a he or a she, they're gonna provide you with the application. Some schools already have that. They already have applications ready to distribu distribute to the students that are wanting to participate in this program. So check all your sources. And if all else fails, have your mom or dad or yourself, however you get around in the city and surrounding counties, go to a workforce center and ask for an application. You do not want to miss this program. It is exciting and you get to learn and earn during the summer. VR counselors are readily available to help you. Although now we all live in a virtual world, virtual applications work just as well. You can fill them out right there and send them back effective immediately. And keep in mind, you're gonna need your identification. And that could be your ID. That could be also your social security number or your birth certificate. Whatever one you choose, you have to have to. That concludes what I have to say. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. And I hope sincerely that I get to run into one of you doing a wonderful job during Summer Earn and Learn. Thank you for coming. Awesome, good deal. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, I think it's great that uh, you mentioned how, you know, we, Ryan and I will be doing site visits and you mentioned the uh, release form so that we can do some recordings and, and, you know, show other folks just how great the program is working for all of our participants. And so with that said, I do want to tell you guys a little bit about Dane Cunningham. Dane Cunningham successfully completed the SEAL program in 2017 and 2019 through the program program, he was able to secure a permanent position and has worked for Shalotsky's for over a year now. Unfortunately, Dane is not able to be with us today to talk to you guys about his experience. However, he did send us a uh, recording so that he is able to share with you guys his experience during the Summer Earn and Learn program and how it has been it has benefited him. And so at this time, we're gonna go ahead and watch uh, that short clip and that message from Dane. Hello, my name is Dane Cunningham, and I was in the SEAL program for, in 2017 and 2019. My first job was at the Sheraton Hotel. At the hotel, they helped um, Fold and sort full towels and sheets, and also I sorted shampoo bottles, and I swept the floor, and I cleaned mirrors windows. At Shlosky's in 2019, I had a job manager for only a few days, and a manager who was willing to help me. His name was Paul. At, at Shlosky's, I helped. I swept the floor, bust tables, pulled key locks to take out the trash, bag pickles, and I still worked there, and uh, I've been working there for about a year and a half. The SEAL program, we learned a lot. It helped me get my foot in the door in the working world. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video uh, from Dane and that you're able to uh, get excited and get pumped about Summer Earn and Learn so that you can also be a part of the work, working world and gain that experience during the summer. Uh, we also get lots and lots of feedback from employers that gives lots of kudos to our participants. And um, Ryan actually has had the pleasure to work with a lot of employers and be uh, 
right there uh, in front of the employers when they're giving uh, this feedback. And he has had lots of conversations about how it the program has benefited their workspace and how um, the participants really worked together as a team and provided really wonderful um, it, service for them, right? And like worked for them really well. And so um, I want to hand it back over to Ryan so that he can tell you guys about employers feedback and what they are saying about the summer earn and learn program. Ryan? Um, this first one here is from Miss Elaine McDaniel, uh, who is the assistant director of Alphabet Alley Learning Center. And that's in Lano. Uh, she was working with a participant named Candy, and they had uh, such an excellent time, uh, just like Dane's experience. Candy was able to be hired on after the program had ended. Um, so we, we don't necessarily make that a goal, right? We, we, we hope that it happens for you guys. We want that to be something that happens for each one of you if you would like that to happen. Um, and so these specific instances like this are just, are, are great. And it is something that we hope you guys are looking forward to also, especially if you really enjoy the experience of working with your employer. Um, and so I'm not gonna necessarily read all of these to you guys, but I will read these two other shorter ones. So this, this other one over here on the right of the top one is um, from the manager of the Chili's in Cedar Park. His name is Michael Corona, and he says that he is happy with the program and looking forward to participating in the future. Uh, all kids come to work on time, and they really enjoy working there and their interactions with each other, customers, and the Chili staff, right, which is super important. We want you guys to have a good time. We want you guys to enjoy the people you're working with and the jobs that you're doing. Um, and then also this one down here at the bottom uh, says that students are working out great. Uh, they really enjoy working with the students and, and seeing them grow and become valuable members of their community. Uh, and they will continue to participate in the future. And that is Miss Ebby Green at the Taylor Housing Authority. Uh, so you can see from these three specific ones, there are, there are very different, uh, different workplaces. So the first one being, uh, Alphabet Alley Learning Center, which is a, a daycare and preschool. Uh, Chili's Cedar Park, everybody knows the Chili's. Uh, and then the Taylor Housing Authority, which is it's an office setting. So there, it's, a, it's a varying scale of employers that we look for. Um, and so we are in that recruiting process still and will continue to be um, throughout the next two months. So we, we're just getting the largest variety of employers that we can so that we get everybody somewhere that they're learning a good, valuable experience. This last one right here is, is one of my favorites by far. Uh, this is from uh, Melissa at Open My World. And this one is actually a letter that they had written to the participants and the job coaches. Uh, and they copied us on it so they could see the nice things that they were saying to their participants after the program had ended. So I'll read this one to you here. Uh, Open My World has concluded, it, concluded its summer learn, earn and learn program with Joshua Meredith and Kevin. Open My World staff wanted to reach out to you and let you know how much we appreciate all your hard work you did this summer. Each one of you gave so much to our horses, clients, and volunteers. You freed the staff up to be able to focus on their needed tasks. We loved watching each one of you develop in a work environment and grow your team skills. Our goal was to give you some wings, teach you to fly, and then let you soar. You did it. We also want to give a huge shout out to your job coaches, Carol and Chris. You were fantastic, and this experience for all would not have been successful without your support. If we do this again next year, Open My World wants to confirm you as job coaches now. Uh, last, Open My World is a family. We love and support each other to the best of our abilities. Each one of you became a family member and we have worked hard together, but we have laughed and loved harder. You will forever be a part of Open My World. We hope you will stay in touch with us. Now go out and open your world. So that is one of, one of my favorite um, comments about about this program from 
from an employer, um, especially since it wasn't even directed to us as a quote, as, as a testimony to their experience. It was directed towards the participants because all of our employers appreciate all of you participants so much. You're always a great help to them and they, they love having the opportunity to help you guys grow because uh, you're going to help them grow also. Um, it's, a, it's, it's always a great shared experience between you guys. And it's our, it's our great pleasure and honor to be able to provide that to you guys. Um, and so we hope that, that you take this opportunity for everything that it is and, and you use it to help develop yourself into the person that you want to become and, and that you, you enjoy it. Most of all, you, we hope you enjoy it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. I mean, this is what it's all about, right? It's about that experience. It's about uh, being able to, um, you know, help out in in a capacity in a work environment, right? And and I think that uh, you'll find that you'll you're going to gain so many skills from participating in this program, and you're going to enjoy it so much that if you have the opportunity to come back for the next Seal experience, you will because I know that. That once you uh, get get to work and and this opens up a door, you're gonna want to come back because it's it's just really a great program uh, for for everyone, both for participants and employers. So it is a shared experience. So thank you so much for that, uh, Ryan. Uh, at this time, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the uh, Q&A box and see if we have some questions there. I think we did have some come in and we'll start to address those. If you think of anything while we're addressing some of these, feel free to uh, enter it here in the chat box. So we have a question here that says, can we do both sessions? And the answer is yes, depending on the employer and um, whether or not they uh, are, are going to be participating in both sessions. But you, you sh if you have more time, like if, in, if you have like six, six, seven weeks that you want to participate, we will be able to, to roll you in at that week, depending on the employer. Does this count as a job search? Um, unfortunately, this session does not count as a job search, um, but it is to inform participants about Summer Earn and Learn, their eligibility, and how they can uh, be a part of this program. Let's see, we have another question down here that says, what does happen if you have no form of ID? Because I don't have any form of ID. Uh, Ryan, do you want to help out with that one? Okay, so uh, this sort of depends. So you don't necessarily have to have a school or a state ID, um, but we do absolutely require uh, two forms of some type of identification, whether it be a social security card or a birth certificate uh, or passport or anything like that. We have to have something. Um, so one of the things that's also acceptable is, um, is, uh, medical records uh, of any kind, um, that basically have your name on there and your birthday and everything. Um, basically we have to be able to, to use some type of identification to set up your payroll information. Uh, without it, we just can't do that portion of it because our third party, uh, payroll contractor, it requires it. And there's just nothing we can do about that. So if you need to get a, um, a birth certificate, I know you can do that at your local county, off, uh, county office. Um, but otherwise, uh, it, I'm not sure of any other ways for you to be able to get them. Uh, it, Obviously, you can go down to the nearest uh, social, security, social Security office to get a new Social Security card, but they're also going to require a birth certificate. Um, so if there is any way that you can get any of those types of, of identification, uh, I know that hospital or doctor's records are usually the easiest if you can't find a birth certificate. Um, but 
again, there, there are several options. And if you would like to email that seal at ruralcapital.net and, and remind us of that question, I can send you a list of um, appropriate forms of identification that we can accept because there's several on there that I can't think of off the top of my head. Cool. Oh, thank you. Okay, there's another question here. Well, there's several questions all along the same line, so we'll, we'll address it all at once. But it's, what types of employers usually participate? What types of jobs do participants need to have any work experience? So uh, we usually have a variety of different employers who participate. Uh, as Ryan uh, mentioned earlier, uh, during the employer testimonials, I mean, we had, I mean, we partnered with Chili's, we partnered with Alphabet Alley, which is a childcare facility. Uh, we also had um, an uh, office job experience as well. And it just really depends. Our business services team does a really great job in outreaching to a variety of different employers and targeting different uh, types of jobs. And so it just really depends um, on the participation of the employer and the types of jobs that they have available. But we, we always push to have a, a, a variety and a healthy mix uh, to be able to place participants as best as we can. Uh, we also do not, oh, that was the question that I was going to ask answer actually. You do not need to have work experience. You know, the goal of this program is to help you gain that work experience. So we're going to do our best to connect you with an employer where you're going to be able to uh, acquire those skills and, and gain that work experience. So I hope that answered that question. Let's see. I received an application for my daughter's teacher at school. Do I use this application or contact her VR counselor and see if they have their own application? So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say you, you'll well, let me hand it over to Ella so that she can actually um, answer that question better. Uh, the application that you're going to want to use is the one that we presented that we showed you guys earlier today. But I want Ella to be able to give you guys a little bit more detail in terms of how to contact VR counselor and, and how to proceed on that front. Ella? The application that you received at your daughter's or son's school is the application that we use you may contact the VR counselor and ask additional questions that the school does not have. Like you can ask them about a job skills trainer for your daughter or son, because a lot of times the students go to those places and they're gonna need one, but the application is still the same. The VR counselor will be able to go over the application with you to make sure that you have filled it out appropriately and you know ask any questions that are not pertaining to your daughter or son that they should know. A lot of times students will sign up for summer earn and learn and not have a case or a counselor. That's a great way for you to go in and get yourself familiar with the services that the Texas Workforce Solutions provides for children and adults with disabilities. Great, thank you, appreciate it. So we have another question here that says, what are the typical work hours, half a day or full day, or it depends? Uh, really, the answer is it depends. It depends on the employer and the shift availability that um, they would like to participate in. And so that's going to vary and it's going to depend on on case by case scenario. But for the most part, I, I want to say that you'll average about four to six hours a day. Uh, but again, it depends on the employer. And let me see. All right. And I'll pile onto that one a little bit too. Yeah. So, the, right. so the ultimate goal for every participant is a five week work experience of 20 hours a week it's up to 20 hours a week. We have to max it out at 20 hours a week just because the purpose of it is to be a part-time uh, work experience. So during the day, if you're working five days of the week, you would average about four hours a day. Uh, and each one of the shift availabilities on that application is a four hour shift. You can choose both of them on the application Certainly, if, if the employer is up for it, you can work the eight hours a day 
with an hour lunch break in between the two four hour shifts. Um, and then that way you'd only have to work two full days and then a half day for the week. And then that's only three days of the week that you're working. Really, you kind of get to work that out with your employer once you've once you've met and have talked to them about, about that. But you put your availability on that application and they'll put their availability on their paperwork to us. And we'll, we also use that to kind of match you guys to a job too. We, that's part of our consideration in there. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. Great info to add on there. Uh, we do have another question regarding the job match based on, uh, so our job jobs matched based on a student's interest and skill. So we do our best to take a look at the application that you turn in and uh, we take all of that into consideration when we are uh, looking at job matches and job placements. And so uh, we do take that into consideration, but I know uh, Ryan mentioned earlier, placements are not guaranteed based on those interests, right? We uh, work with a variety of different employers. And so we do our best to match, but sometimes it might not work out that way, but we still encourage you to take that work experience and, and move forward with it because you're still going to be gaining, uh, those skills that, that you'll need maybe for like another job. So I hope that answered that question there. Um, I have another one here. I have a talking disability. Will I still be able to work? The answer is yes. And um, I, I'm not sure if Ryan or Ella want to add a little bit more about, about that, but the answer is yes. We'll do our best to place you uh, in, in the appropriate job that uh, will will work will work with you on that on that end. And I know um, you know everybody that we work with is is all about reasonable accommodation, and we definitely will do our best to place you regardless. Mm -hmm. But Ryan, Ella, if you guys want to add anything, oh. I'm going to get in the car with you on this one because a lot of kids, most of them, will have some type of disability. Based on the disability you could or could not be assigned to a job skill trainer. That person is going to show up just like you are and help you learn and communicate and navigate your way through that work experience, should that be what is needed for you as part of the accommodation. Right, and, and I'll, I'll take it even a, a step further. So if you show up and you've filled out your application, you show up to that orientation, and you are ready and willing to, to take on this work experience. I promise you that we will do everything that we can to make sure every one of you is placed somewhere, no matter what. Uh, I, like I said earlier, I cannot guarantee that for certain, but I will make sure I do everything that I can to make sure that you guys are placed somewhere. It may not be your favorite place in the world. Obviously not, not every time that's gonna happen, but um, there is no reason at all whatsoever that any type of disability that you may have will keep you from us placing you somewhere. You will be able to work if you're ready for it. Awesome. Thanks guys, great responses um, for our audience here, so thanks. Uh, we have another question here. Is it possible to do the work readiness training before the first session and then participate in the second session, but not the first? Asking due to conflicts uh, the week before the second session. Okay, so yes, we, we will work with you guys to, to make that happen. If you're not available for that work readiness training, but because maybe you're out of town, but you still want to participate in the second session, uh, we will work with you and we will make sure that we figure out a way to get you into a work experience training so that we're able to get you started um, for your second session and still be able to participate. So um, just let us know obviously beforehand and, and we'll make it happen. Um, let's see. 
If my son has a job skills trainer already that is interested in participating in the program, how do they apply? I'm going to go ahead and hand that over to Ella. She might have a response for that one. So if your son has a job skill trainer already, that person probably is their trainer through the school. That is okay. We are taking applications to get job skill trainers to work with the children anyway. So you would need to contact your counselor so that she could walk that job skill trainer through the process of getting what is called a VIN number with the Texas Workforce Solutions so that they can work with your son. A lot of the schools already have teachers and teachers trainers that are already on the case or the caseloads of many counselors to work with the students already. So if he's not the job coach trainer that has one, then this would be a good time for him or her to go into the center and find out how they can get connected to do so every summer. Gotcha. Great, thank you. We have another question and probably for you, Ella. Uh, it is, as an employer, how do you become a vocational rehabilitation approved training trainer employer? So if I think, I think what you're asking is if you are an employer already and you want your site to be a work site, it would be the same thing, only this time you would have to go into Ryan and fill out the paperwork that they require for you to have as a work vendor for students to come in and work in your particular area. Gotcha. And uh, we have several questions regarding the application and where you can get the application. We currently don't have it available online. Several of you guys are asking if the application can be accessed online and downloaded. Uh, currently, that is not an option for us right now, but you can get the application from uh, your VR representative at your school, uh, or you can also email Charmaine Johnson or, my, uh, or um, Ryan and I at SEAL um, at roll, seal at rollcapital.net and we will gladly get you guys connected and, and start the application process. Most of the school's SPED coordinators and people that work in that arena should already have the SEAL flyer, the calendar, and the application. So go by there because that's the closest to you, the coordinator at the school. And if that coordinator does not have it, she will more than likely direct you to the VR counselor so that you can get connected and get an application. Yes. And uh, some of you guys are also asking about uh, sessions, like selecting what session you want to participate in. When you complete your application and you talk to your VR representative, ensure that you let them know if you have a preference for summer session number one or summer session number two, like let them know so that they can note that on the application and we will take that um, into consideration as we're placing and getting everything ready. Okay. Well, it looks like we went through all of the questions here. So at this time, I don't see any more coming in. I do see a lot of thanks and great presentation. So we are so happy that you guys enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. Uh, I don't, again, don't have any other questions coming in. So at I've, this I've found a couple. Uh, oh, oh, go for a it, Ryan. Quick ones. Um, so one of them here uh, says, my son has both a driver's license and a passport, but both have expired due to COVID restrictions and, and getting them updated. Can these still be used? Um, unfortunately, we have to say no to that. And it, it's really not up to us. They have to be current and valid. Um, in order for us to send that payroll information off to our third party payroll contractor. Uh, they, it, it's because it's a federal guideline, they can't make exceptions to that. And so then neither can we. Um, so we will take the, the temporary ones that they give you whenever you take, uh, when you go to renew those things, the paper copies that they give you that are temporary, we can accept those, um, but we can't accept the expired ones. 
Um, and so I'm sorry about that. I know that it's, it's kind of a pain and with COVID it is hard to get appointments to do those things, but unfortunately Bert, it's a federally mandated uh, rule. So we can't really do anything about that. Uh, and then another question here says, if you're on a 504 plan at school, does that make you eligible for this program? The answer is yes, absolutely. Um, super easy. Yes. <laughs> no, no matter what, if you have 504 plan or any type of IEP, individualized um, education plan with your school, you qualify for this program. Deal. Good deal. Well, it looks like that is all the questions we got. So thank you guys so much for joining us and being a part of today's Summer Earn and Learn information session. Before y'all head out, if you don't mind, we did, we did drop a question in the poll. If you could answer yes or no, it's a simple question. Was this session helpful? If you thought it was helpful, please uh, select yes. If you didn't, please select no. Um, all feedback is welcome. So thanks again for uh, completing that poll question and for being here with us today. We hope you have a great rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. See y'all in the summer. Goodbye.